Hi everyone, welcome to my channel and I am Subhash Chandra. In this video, we are going to discuss about the reality in piping design career. That's very important to understand the reality of the industry. Only then, we will come to know whether we are in the right track or we are in the wrong track or not. Because what happens in every industry, if you take as an example, there will be speculations, there will be fake news, there will be good news. So it's important to understand which is right and which is wrong and moreover there will be an exaggerated information. So you have to know the ground reality. So it's really important to understand in any field not only in piping actually. So especially in piping I wanted to highlight about a few points over here actually. So these are predominantly where the fake news and speculations were made actually and there are some sort of a perceptions within the beginners and experienced. So being in this field, I feel that I'm the right person to clarify all these doubts. So without wasting your time, let's begin. So the first one that I would like to clarify is that is piping design field is a declining field actually. Uh, we don't have any future or um, uh, are we really going to uh, struggle being in the piping design career? So from uh, my experience, let me tell you, do not believe this. These are the speculations and sort of an uh, reactive responses that comes out from uh, the people, those who don't get an opportunity. So piping design field is going to be an evergreen field. So I told in many of my previous videos, see piping designs are predominantly used in oil and gas, petrochemicals, refineries. And if you look at our lifestyle, we cannot survive with most of the petrochemical products. The products that we are using in our daily life, almost 30 to 40 percentage of them are from petrochemical backgrounds. And moreover, see, it all comes out when uh, people think that there is no life for the oil and gas um, uh, resources actually. But this is uh, basically when they think that uh, the EVs, electrical vehicles are going to replace the oil and gas energies or uh, the electrical power is going to replace. No, it's not going to happen actually. So oil and gas source is the free resource that comes out from the, the mother app. So uh, this is one of the rich resource which is available in plenty actually. So for the another 50 to 100 years, uh, we don't see any sort of a declining in oil and gas uh, uh, the usability in our industry. So uh, let me just conclude it. Piping design is going to be an evergreen field. You don't have to worry about it. And it is one of the mainstream mechanical engineering job and mechanical engineering divisions. If you are really interested to become uh, who want I mean a design engineer or the one who wanted to uh, experience the true mechanical experience piping design is the right field. So with this let me move on to my second point actually. Second point is no growth in piping design career. So I'm getting these sort of an informations and questionaries from uh, many of my followers to understand about the reality. So let me tell you in any engineering sector, uh, if you have worked in engineering companies or uh, if you have, in, uh, have some sort of knowledge about engineering companies, you must know how the engineering uh, organization works actually. In any engineering organization, there will be set off on hierarchy levels actually. For example, in piping, if you are starting as a uh, junior engineer, then you will slowly move on to an engineering or engineer or associative engineer. This is the next level from junior level. So from being an associate engineer, you will be promoted to the senior engineer with experience and time. And from senior engineer, you will have multiple opportunities. Either you can become the principal engineer or you can become a lead engineer or you can become an HOD of a particular division or a technical manager with time and experience. So this kind of hierarchy is available in uh, almost all the engineering companies. So which is also applicable for piping design field. So if you are into piping design field and if you wanted to grow yourself continuously in piping design, this is the hierarchy that you have to follow. See, there are companies will have some um, minor variations, but predominantly if you see the global structure, the hierarchy remains same from junior to senior or senior to lead and then becomes the HOD or technical manager. This is the way it is actually. So as far as the growth wise, 
you have to follow the hierarchy at the same time if you want to grow faster then you have to learn more skills and adapt to the organization requirements and support the projects in such a way that your skills will be presented that you can highly qualify to manage the the highly competent projects so that's how you can grow actually so as far as growth wise actually uh, either you have to follow the hierarchy level or if you, if you want to be a uh, faster in growth you have to increase or improve more skills and knowledge actually so this is about the growth now let's move on to the third point the third point is going to be no opportunity for freshers so these uh, are some sort of a speculation that i kept on receiving there is no freshers uh, i mean there is no opportunity for freshers in piping and those are sort of a users actually see to my experience if you look at the linked alone actually uh, nowadays the platforms are available so uh, one simply cannot put a fake news here and there right if you go and find the piping designers actually definitely you will be able to find the candidates who have joined in piping with ha which has a less than one year of experience what is one year of experience in the sense actually one year of experience is almost the candidates who just have completed a college uh, within a year or two so that's how it is actually so if you look at the opportunities there are opportunities but the key factor is that the candidates who are going for an opportunity do not have the skills and the candidates who have uh, the skills and the knowledge and they when they are highly equipped to go for an interview they are being selected for the freshers opportunity let's say the actual scenario what is happening see uh, being a mechanical engineering graduate once you complete the engineering graduate only then you will come to know there is something known as a piping design field right so you start learning about the um, uh, the opportunities and you end up finally taking the software course actually so once you finish the software course and you will uh, come to a mind that and uh, you should immediately get a job no that's not the fact if you are preparing for something you should know what are the industrial requirements it doesn't mean that just because completing one particular software you will get a job no that's not the fact actually because you are trying the job in the open job market so you are going to compete actually you're going to compete with the people who has an equal competence to in order to fight with the candidates who has an equal com competence you need to have a skills you also have to be competent so my advice is that if you are really serious about getting into piping design career immediately right after your uh, graduation then you have to start preparing at the early stage at least from the end of your third year so that gives you some sort of a time to prepare yourself to understand what is piping design and you can learn software practice those software practice is important just because completing a course for a month will not give you any sort of an uh, leverage to be selected actually you need to have the uh, ability to handle the softwares during the testing of the interview so in interview generally they give you a test for this 3d modeling so you have to pass that you have to be really good in uh, fittings details you have to be really good in theoreticals uh, you do, you have to be really good in drawings actually for that you need to know the 2d drawings 2d softwares so these are the competencies and the skill sets that you have to uh, prepare for if you can prepare and be ready and once the opportunity comes to you you will be able to knock it actually so most of the speculations are from candidates who have a very less prepared or neither prepared actually just they would have completed a software course and are trying for years and years and that's one of the reason why they were not uh, getting the job you have to have multiple skills even in order to get a job as a fresher so that's the reality of the industry okay with this let me move on to the fourth question by saying there are opportunities for freshers and you have to be prepared for those opportunities if you are really serious about getting a job immediately after graduation now let's go to the fourth point the fourth point is about the speculation of salary which is being paid less in piping compared to any other engineering field this is absolutely not true don't believe this because i could see from my experience piping engineering field gives a better salary compared to any other engineering field that's because that you can take you can go and speak to any piping design engineer who has an 10 to 15 years of experience who can tell you all these things see one thing we have to understand is that see in every industry you have three types of companies small scale medium scale and large scale 
see if you are uh, working in a small scale the small scale indicates that the magnitude i mean the 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 potential of the company uh, is small so they can only pay less actually so eventually you have to move from small scale to medium scale to large scale so that's how your growth and that's how you can improve your salary see most of the people are comparing the salaries with it salary to be frank actually in id 70 to 80 percentage of them are getting way less than the industrial standards only 20 to 30 percentage who also has a specialization actually they are a specialist only for the specialist are paying i mean are paying good in it industries and for general categories they are paying really less but if you compare the general categories in piping they are really paid well compared to any other engineering field so that's all i can say so do not believe this actually uh, if you go and check the reality, the, every company has standards. If you are really good enough uh, in knowledge and skill, then you can move to the company where they are paying higher actually. See, remaining in one area without improving, without enhancing your knowledge, without experience, just by dreaming that you will be getting more salary, that's not the real fact. Right? I'm just trying to help you actually. Because a lot of people are thinking that sitting in one place for um, many years can give them the privilege to get more salary no that's not the fact actually the fact is you have to be skilled you have to be knowledge you have to be uh, i mean capable to handling the different projects that's how it is actually so if you're that candidate you will never ever complain about the salary so as for a salary wise piping design engineering are far better than any other engineering field so with this let me go to the fifth point the fifth point is piping design engineers are not taken in a permanent role basically these days there is no permanent role for piping design engineers i wanted to clarify this speculations but before that i just want to give you the real time scenario which has happened nearly around 10 15 years See, from 2005 to 2015, there were lots of opportunities in piping design engineering um, field, basically. There were opportunities in oil and gas, chemicals and petrochemical fields, basically. So those days were really a golden opportunity for piping um, engineers and designers. Uh, basically, even if you don't have any uh, experience by just uh, learning a particular software, you can get into piping design field. That was the scenario. So the since the requirement was so huge actually the companies hired a lot of people since they were not in a position to hire in a permanent role within a short span of time they hired multiple contractors and multiple agencies to hire them actually and they have provided all facilities in terms of hourly basis so that's how things started actually so when the people started working as a contract employees they realized that the benefits for the contract employees are far better than permanent employees you have to realize this the benefits of working being in a contract positions are far better than being in permanent position because those who were working in a permanent have to take a lot of responsibilities at the same time their salaries are fixed based on monthly income actually but at the same time for the contract employees even if they work half an hour more or one hour more they will be able to get the overtime but the permanent employees were not in a position to get that benefit actually so there were times that it really felt that being in contract was really a good opportunity for a piping design engineer. even now there were people who are in the permanent role and contract role if you look at the op i mean benefit wise actually the contract employees were getting more benefits in terms of salaries and remunerations because they don't have any other liabilities they will take all this uh, benefits in terms of hourly um, rate basically but if you look at the permanent role they get the salary very less but at the same time they'll get medical and they'll get other sort of a benefits but comparatively if you look at the monthly salary of the contractual employees actually so the permanent employees remunerations in a year wise it will be less actually that's one of the reason why most of the uh, i mean the pre previous employees are still willing to go in contract rather than permanent actually so the uh, uh, the speculations about this is not true first of all actually there are companies taking in the permanent role but people are not willing to go in a permanent role actually because the times have changed see the nowadays uh, at this point of time you cannot uh, simply um, what do you call it, scare someone just by in the name of um, security or in the name of uh, monthly income so they have the capability even if you 
throw them out of of the job and they will be able to get an opportunity somewhere else in a better salary actually so just because by telling the name of a permanent role and uh, giving them the the what do you call uh, the the fear of a security will not secure their uh, job basically you have to show them the benefits what is the benefits you are going to get in the permanent what's the benefits that you're going to get in the contract if you feel that the benefits that you're going to get in the contract will you go to the permanent role or you will be going to the contractual role so that's the reality actually so there are companies taking the permanent role but there are people have uh, what do you call they are not willing to go in the contractual i mean a permanent role uh, they prefer contractual roles are more comfortable for them actually because they may get a lot of over time they get uh, the whole lot of benefits in the monthly salary let's imagine that you're getting all these benefits the benefits that you're going to get after 12 months you're getting in this month that's how it works in a contractual role but for permanent role you have to wait for the appraisal what if if your appraisal didn't go well but contractual empl- employees no need to worry about it they just have to increase the hourly rate if any other company pays an hourly rate far better than this company they'll move to the other company that's a factual reason basically if you're comfortable in permanent role be there in permanent role if you're comfortable in contractual role you can be there in contractual role so as far as speculation wise there are companies who are taking people in the permanent role as well so that is what i would like to end with actually so i hope that these informations uh, might have given you some sort of an idea about what you wanted to do actually and how the piping design engineering field reality is about so i will meet you in another fantastic video until then bye from subhash chandra